Hey everyone, so the first thing I'm doing is prepping the eye area. I've squeezed a little out of the tube onto the back of my hand. I've picked some up on my brush and I'm sweeping it all over the eye area. Adding a primer is just going to make sure the shadows apply nice and evenly, that they blend smoothly and that they last all day long. I decided to create another look with the Wet n Wild Nude Awakening Eyeshadow Palette because I got great feedback on the last tutorial. My last tutorial I used the dark burgundy slash plum tones in the palette and for this look I'm going a bit lighter and brighter. The first shadow I'm taking is the transition shade. I picked up some of this on a fluffy blending brush and now I'm adding this colour into the crease of the eye. What I really like about this palette especially is that the shadows are labelled. So as you could see a minute ago the transition shades are embossed and in regards to the other shadows in the palette they're numbered on the back. So you've got two little pictorials to go alongside that. So if you're a beginner and you like the look of the palette but are unsure of how to pair the shadows together, you've got a couple of ideas there which is handy. And then also my tutorials, obviously. <laughs> so once I've added a couple of layers of this shadow into the crease and I'm happy with how it looks, then I'm moving on to the lower lash line. And I'm just sweeping that shadow down along there. I'm using a little bullet shape brush to smoke the shadow out and I'm making sure to connect the shadow on the outer corner as always because I don't want to disconnect. Next then I'm taking this light shimmery shadow and I'm picking this up on a flat C shaped brush just because this style of brush I find works best for packing colour onto the eyelid. Because this is a shimmery shadow as well I want a dense brush as opposed to a fluffy one because I don't want those shimmery particles going everywhere but my eyelid. So I'm just tapping this shadow down, making my way halfway across the eye, patting and pressing until I'm happy with the effect and as always I'm adding a couple of layers. Next then I'm taking this shadow here, as you can see it's a more vibrant than the previous shade, it's a gorgeous kind of peachy curly shimmery shade. I've picked it up on the flat C shape brush again, I've just flipped the brush over and I'm using the other side to press this onto the remaining half of the eyelid. Now as you can see I'm patting this onto the lid and it doesn't look too dissimilar to the previous shade. To be honest it actually looks like I've applied that light shimmery shade all the way across the eye. It's not all doom and gloom though, some shadows just perform a little better with a mixing medium. So I've just picked up some more shadow on my brush, I've spritzed it with water and now I'm reapplying it and as you can see the coral tones now are really peeking through, it just packs much more of a punch. So to add some depth I'm taking this darker cool tone transition shade, I've picked this up again on my fluffy brush and I'm focusing this mainly on the outer third of the eye. I'm using circular motions to blend the shadow on that outer corner and of course I don't want harsh lines so even though the darkness will be kept to that outer portion of the eye I don't want a harsh divide so once I've very little product left on my brush I'm sweeping it across into the crease and that'll just fade the dark brown in with the lighter brown that I applied earlier. With the darker shades there can sometimes be a bit of fallout so I take my powder brush and very lightly Barely touching the skin, I swoop across where the fallout is to dust it away. Basically, the powder is sitting on top of the skin, so you don't want to apply pressure when you're sweeping the powder away, or you're just going to smear that powder eyeshadow into your skin. So, then I'm just reapplying my shadow as normal, as I mentioned before, keeping it to the outer third of the eye only, and mainly in the crease area, and I'm keeping that lid as light and bright as possible. So moving on to the lower lash line now, once again I'm taking the small bullet shaped brush, I've picked up some more of that dark brown transition shade and I'm applying it about two thirds of the way across the lower lash line and again I'm always making sure to connect it up on that outer corner. Now I'm going in with some black eyeshadow, this is the final bit of depth that I'm going to add and to apply this shadow I'm taking a tapered blending brush. The fact that the bristles are tapered to a point means that I can apply the shadow with precision but then if I apply a little bit more pressure on the brush I can blend with ease too. So I like to create a V on the outer corner, a kind of sideways V, so slightly down onto the lid and then back up into the crease and then I fade the shadow out towards the brow at an angle just to elongate the eyes and I like to do this a few times starting with a small amount of black on my brush first and then I build up the intensity. It's just much easier to work with a small amount and add as you need to as opposed to applying a load of black at once and then you know you've, you're kind of struggling then to blend it out. It's just much easier to add little by little. So you don't want the black to overpower the look, you literally just want it to add some definition. So now I've switched to a small angled brush and I've pressed the shadow down along the lower lash line and then I'm pressing it all the way along the upper lash line just mirroring my own lashes. 
Next then I'm taking this nude pencil from Penny's. It's called a Miracle Pencil because it's got multiple uses. It can be used on the lips, the eyes, it can be used to conceal. But today I'm giving um, the eyes a wider appearance by applying it to the waterline. So I've gone back to my palette now and I'm taking this shimmery shadow. And I'm using this to add a nice pop around the tear duct of the eye. And I'm also adding it under the brow bone as well. Finally then, I'm using the Wet n Wild Mega Length Mascara to blend my own lashes in with the Kiss lashes that I just applied. And then that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. And if you've got any requests, anything that you'd like to see coming up, please let me know. And I'll catch you all soon.